What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back for some more live Pokemon showdown. Today we're going to be hopping back on the NU suspect ladder where uh, Magneton is being suspected. I forgot to put it in the description before uh, and by before I mean in the first part but I'll try to remember to uh, stick the thread down there in case you guys would like to read more about it and uh, see if you can form your own opinion. Uh, it's looking like Magneton is going to get banned, and if I end up uh, laddering up enough to, you know, get Rex and vote myself, I'll be voting banned as well. Not because I think that Magneton is overpowered, because it by no means is overpowered in NU, but uh, it's a bit over-centralizing at this point. Uh, people are starting to run things like Stunfisk just to counter uh, Magneton, or check it, I suppose. Um, and I'm all for, you know, being innovative and everything, and using some different sets and different Pokemon, but... Uh, there's a certain point where uh, you know there's a little bit of a problem if you're running you know one whole slot of a Pokemon just to counter a different Pokemon specifically but that's just my opinion of course uh, it's not right or wrong it just is uh, so anyway I figured he's gonna start off with Uxie here uh, judging by his team even though he doesn't have a rapid spinner um, I decided to try to get some damage off on this thing I didn't want it getting up screens either or just I wanted to limit the number of screens um, turns out that he has the T-Wave, I kind of was not expecting that, I was expecting like Light Screen Reflect, uh, Stealth Rock U-Turn, or Psychic or something along those lines. Um, but two knockoffs are going to be enough to take him out, and he's only able to get up his Stealth Rocks and T-Wave me, which is fine. Looking at his team here, Sneasel is not too useful, the only other thing I would use it for would be the Priority, and being paralyzed doesn't really ruin that for me, unless of course I get fully paralyzed, and that would be uh, kind of a bad time. But because he's going into Girder here, uh, I have a relatively safe switch into Quagsire, but I want to take this opportunity to go into Claydol to, one, Rapid Spin away his Stealth Rocks because he has nothing else on his team that can set up those hazards again now that Uxie is gone, um, as he's going to go for the bulk up here. And then I want to set up Stealth Rocks because he has no way to remove the hazards uh, that I can see here, unless, like, Tropius gets to Fog or something. But even if it does, I don't think he's going to be running it. It's probably going to be some kind of harvest shenanigan. Uh, so I'm going to go straight for the rapid spin here. I'm fine with sacrificing this clay doll to uh, get rid of those rocks. Even though he is at plus one after that bulk up, um, he's not going to be able to kill me with a mock punch from there, I don't think. So he's probably just going to go for knockoff again or drain punch or something. So I'm going to set up my stealth rocks here. So this is exactly what I wanted. If he wants to set up more bulk ups, that's fine too, because I have Quagsire, which is unaware, so it completely just ignores all of his stat boosts. Uh, so this is pretty much as good of a situation as I could have hoped for in this battle. Things are going very, very smoothly through five turns. No screens up on my opponent's side of the field. And uh, yeah, things are just looking good. Things are looking good. So uh, I think now I'm going to go into my Quagsire, and I can start to wear this thing down. Um... It's looking like I'm going to have to burn it. Um, that's going to give him his Guts boost, which is a bit unfortunate. But I don't think that's going to be enough to break through Quagsire, to be honest. So he's going to go for knockoff here, as expected. You know, he wants to get rid of either my Rocky Helmet or my Leftovers Recovery, which is understandable. That knockoff only does 16%, though, and his Drain Punch only does 19%. So activating Guts is not going to be too big of an issue for me here. Because even with that boost, it's only going to be doing... Um, his Drain Punch is going to be doing like 25-ish percent or something along those lines. So that really doesn't scare me. So I'm going to go for Recover here. I'm going to play this safe because this Girder can become a problem if I do lose Quagsire due to like critical hits or some Haxy shenanigans. So this might be a little bit of a stally part of the battle, um, especially because I'm really, really unlucky when it comes to uh, getting Skull Burns when I need them. So this might be uh, drawn out, unless he decides to switch, of course, but it doesn't seem like he's interested in that. Uh, if he starts to bulk up more, that would be funny. But I do get the Scald Burn on, what was that, the second try? So that's not bad at all. That's not too bad. I can't really complain. Uh, so now I can alternate Recover and Protect and, you know, either uh, Earthquaking him or Scalding him for more damage. And I think Earthquake actually does more, even though he's at plus one. But uh, that's... That's just uh, the way it goes, I suppose. Uh, I'll go for Recover here again, because uh, we'll get to see how much his Drain Punch will be doing now that he is burned. That only does, yeah, about 26%. That's about what I figured it would do, and that's really not backbreaking because even if he does get a critical hit, that only puts it at about 40-ish percent, maybe a little bit less than that, and I'm fine with that. 
Uh, that's that's not terrible. So Quiggle is going to be able to handle this girder. It's going to be a slow and painful death because he will be recovering a little bit of HP with his drain punches as he ends up doing about 30% that time. Earthquake did 19. How much did Skull do? It did 13%. Okay. So even though he's at plus one, Earthquake is doing a little bit more damage. Uh, I also need to be careful here. I don't necessarily want him to just pull a safe switch into the Tropius. Because at that point... Uh, well, no, I have a safe switch into Vileplume, pretty much. Um, even if he has Air Slash, it's not going to be doing too, too much because it's a Tropius. So I really don't have too much to worry about here. Even if he does get a safe switch, it's not the end of the world. So he's just going to Drain Punch here. He does get a critical hit. And I'm pretty happy that I ended up going for Recover that turn. Otherwise, that could have been pretty bad. But now I can Earthquake again, I suppose. Or Protect. I don't want to just keep... You know continuing to protect because I feel like that's a little cheeky but that's the way I have to wear this thing down uh, the rest of my team kind of gets destroyed by girder so he does actually decide to pull the switch into the tropius uh, so he's gonna forego his boost I mean it didn't really matter with quagsire out on the field anyway so I guess I could understand um, he just let his girder take a whole bunch of damage first which I'm okay with so I'm gonna pull the hard switch into vile plume here I was expecting something along the lines of a leech seed but he actually goes for toxic that's fine by me he has no switch ins to a sludge bomb so he just has to let this thing die and I uh, have quite a bit of speed investment so we're gonna be able to outspeed that tropius and get rid of it which is great now he has no switch ins to earthquake so I can just spam it uh, as much as I would like to uh, this also means that I have no real practical use for Sneasel unless I really feel like I'm going to need that Ice Shard for Zeb Strika, and I don't really think that that's going to be the case. So we can use it as a sacrificial lamb, so to speak, um, to be able to get a safe switch into something else here. So he's going to go right into his Mag Mortar, take that 25% due to the rocks. It looks like he has an even HP number too, uh, which is fine, I suppose. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't want to stay in, that is for sure, but the question is, is he really going to go for a fire type move? Because I have a Ninetales. Hmm, I mean, he still went for bulk up, even though I had a Quagsire, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to make the switch into Quagsire here, and he's going to go for the Psychic, actually. Now, it's possible that he is locked in here, but I would like to protect to see if uh, he, in fact, can switch moves. He didn't show Life Orb. Uh, no, he's just going to go for Psychic again. He's probably locked in via a choice item. I'm not sure exactly. Judging by that damage, probably choice Scarf. Probably, because Quagsire doesn't take special hits too well. So he's going to go into Girder here. That's fine, as I uh, am able to get my Recover off. So back up to full health, basically. And now I can just go for EQ. I could go for Protect. It uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, he's going to go for the Drain Punch, so Earthquake's actually going to do a little bit more now that he doesn't have that uh, Defense Boost. Well, wait a minute, no, I just ignore all Stat Boost, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? I completely uh, derped on that from earlier. I've been derping on a lot of things lately, but uh, yeah, I would like to say that it's because I'm rusty and I was away from the game for a while, but these are mistakes that I would make anyway, just because, uh, you know, I'm recording and that's what happens. So he's going to go into Floatzel. And this is probably physical. Yeah, it could be banded. But even still, I don't know if you're going to be able to break Quagsire without the help of a flinch or two. Uh, Earthquake is probably a 2 at KO from there just because Floatzel is pretty frail. So uh, he opts to go for the Ice Punch, possibly predicting me to want to switch into a Vile Plume. But uh, yeah, Earthquake's going to be an easy 2 at KO here. He definitely has no switch ins now. I'm pretty sure everything just dies when it comes in. So he just goes for the Ice Punch again, and Floatzel is gone, so yeah, we're looking really good right now. We are in good shape, as he is going to go into Zeb Strika. We can protect to scout for the possible Hidden Power Grass, I'm expecting that, in fact. Yep, that is what he goes for. Uh, now, he could be Life Orb, he could be locked into that. I think that his Floatzel and his Magmortar were his choice Pokemon, so this is probably Life Orb, if I really had to guess. Um, I could sacrifice Sneasel here, potentially, but, hmm, I could also just go right into Vileplume. I don't know if he can kill me with an Overheat, if he is, uh, Life Orb. I don't know. I don't have a lot of, like, HP and defensive investment because I have quite a bit of speed, so he might just be able to take me out with an Overheat. I don't really know. It's probably a roll. 
Uh, yeah, that hidden power does absolutely nothing. He does show off that he is Life Orb, so he's probably either going to go for Volt Switch or Overheat this turn. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say Overheat, and that is in fact an Oko. Wow. I wonder if that was Modest, or if that was just a, a damage roll or what, but Vileplume's going to bite the dust. Um, that really doesn't matter, because uh, Vileplume is not going to be doing much against Magmortar anyway, and Girder is really not a threat at this point because I still have Quagsire alive. So that's not the end of the world, and he had to drop his special attack to be able to get that KO here. So he's either going to have to sacrifice this Substrika or take damage on something else. Um, and that means that I can just go for a, a nasty plot here. If that Magmortar is Scarfed, it you know will outspeed Ninetales, but he can't kill me with anything. Uh, the best he would have would be like... I don't know, he shouldn't have anything to hit me with super effectively. He'd probably have to go for Focus Blast. Uh, or Psychic, depending on what his moveset looks like. So he's going to actually go into Girder and sacrifice that to the burn, which is perfect because I get a free plus two and Girder is gone. So he has no Death Fodder at this point. Uh, no priority left as well as he loses the Mach Punch. And he's going to have to go into Mag Mortar here and hope for a critical hit with a Focus Blast or something. Because uh, I'm just going to go for Psy Shock. And turns out that he is Scarf, but he misses the Focus Blast, unfortunately. I don't think that really mattered unless he were to uh, get a critical hit there. I don't think that was going to take Ninetales out. So we get the win as he's going to forfeit. And yeah, he really had no way to win at that point because I had just too many Pokemon remaining. So let's go ahead and look for another battle. That was kind of a long one. We're about 11 minutes in, 11 and a half minutes, and we only had one battle. So uh, this may be a two or three battle uh, episode, but I'm fine with that because I'm enjoying using the team and getting my competitive legs under me again. Uh, it takes a while, I don't know. I'm really slow when it comes to that. So this is a pretty threatening team. I see the Fletch in there, that's a huge threat. But as long as I have uh, Quagsire and you know Magneton around, that's not the end of the world, although it can carry overheat sometimes. Uh, Haunter, I'm not sure what that's gonna be. That could potentially be a Choice Scarf user, maybe. I've seen them run a bunch of different things. I've seen Specs, I've seen Scarf, Life Orb, and Focus Sash, so I need to watch out for all of those, basically. Uh, he's got the Rapid Spin user in the Armaldo. He actually leads off with that, and he's probably going to want to switch here, but he's going to eat a Specs Analytic Flash Cannon from our Magneton here, and that is most likely going to be a 2 ko on everything, with the exception of maybe, maybe this? Now that does 60% uh, with the leftovers, it's going to do less this time because it won't get the Analytic Boost this time around. So he will live that barely. Actually, that may have been a damage roll. Wow, I think, well, we could have gotten max damage right there. I'm just going to continually flash cannon because there's a chance we can get a spadef drop here. And if we get that, this Masharna is dead. Um, and I mean, the worst that happens is that he just uses a whole bunch of moonlights. And I am perfectly okay with that because that's really going to limit the longevity of this, especially if it's Calm Mind. Because, yeah, he's already used three. So, Moonlight only has a total of 8 PP, so if we can get him to use like 5, that'd be great. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. I'm surprised we haven't got the Spadef drop. What is the chance on Flash Cannon? Is it only 10%? I thought it was higher than that, but uh, maybe it's not. I'm just having a hard time getting uh, the hacks happening. <laughs> I don't need the hacks though. Let's be real here. We don't need to uh, we don't need to be hoping for hacks. That's kind of cheeky. So now he's gonna show off the calm mind. And he should be able to take another flash cannon very easily. He's probably gonna go for moonlight here though. So I have some options. Uh, or do I have options? I probably should go right out into Sneasel and get rid of those lefties, because that's a problem. I don't know if he's like mono attacking psychic, he won't be able to do anything to me anyway. So uh, I could go for Pursuit to get off a lot of damage. I don't think that'll kill, though. He's most likely physically defensive because he is Calm Mind, so I'm just going to go for the knockoff, and he's going to switch in what is clearly physically defensive Miltank because that was a critical hit, and that only did 47%. Wow. Um, so that's the defensive core right there, the Miltank physically defensive and the Musharna also physically defensive but carrying the Calm Mind. At least I'm assuming that's what it is. So I'm going to pull another switch here and go right into Magneton because I can't be paralyzed with Body Slam shenanigans. And uh, now I get a free Volt Switch if I want. Or I can fire off a Thunderbolt. He has no ground types. He has no immunities to electricity. Or electric types, I should say. Uh, do I want to fire off a Thunderbolt here? 
Are we going to pull off the same shenanigans with the Musharna? Probably not, because he's going to run out of Moonlights. So I don't think he wants to do that. He's going to have to have something eat this. And so yeah, basically, once we... Oh wow, he leaves Miltank in, actually, to go for the Body Slam, thinking I was going to Volt Switch. Not a bad play, uh, because he could have gotten a Paralysis off on something and uh, some chip damage, but that did a lot. That was non-analytic boosted. We did not get the analytic there, and that was still 71%. That's outrageous. Uh, he's gonna pull a switch here. We are gonna get the analytic boost this time. That does 75% to this Misharna. That's just stupid powerful. Magneton, why are you so strong? This is ridiculous. So now Misharna's gone. We get a meaningless critical hit there, but he was just sacking it at that point. Uh, there are no switch-ins. But now he extra has no switch hits. <laughs> he's got nothing that wants to come in on this. Um, he's going to have to go into his Forgotier, I'm guessing here, to threaten me out with like a Hydro Pump or Scald or Dark Pulse or something. Hmm. So he has to know that I'm Specs at this point, judging by how much damage it's been doing. And, I mean, if you can't eyeball it, you can just very easily calc it. But... Yeah, that's just, that's stupid damage, my goodness. My goodness, uh, that's why you need to have some type of electric type immunity. Um, but even still, with electric type immunities, Flash Cannon still destroys a lot of those Pokemon to begin with. Um, and when it carries Hidden Power Ground, you can't even switch in your own Magnetons. So, Forgot is here. I'm not sure what this thing is gonna wanna do to me. Uh, I'm expecting like a... Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what I'm expecting. Are you gonna go for like HP fire? Do you carry that? Uh, maybe HP ground? I'm kind of expecting HP ground. I'm gonna go into Claydol here. No, he's just gonna go for Dark Pulse, okay. That was not gonna kill me. You were just gonna sacrifice your Forgotti unless you were hoping for a flinch there. Yeah, there was no way that was gonna kill me. Um, I'm gonna set up Stealth Rocks here as he just uh, goes for the Ice Beam to finish me off. He's taking more and more Life Orb Recoil which I'm fine with because that's going to put him uh, inside priority range at some point of uh, Sneasel. So that's fine. And uh, this thing has like 90-ish base speed. Base 97, I think. It's a really awkward speed tier. But it's a good speed tier. If it was over base 100, this thing would be like borderline broken in NU. It's already pretty good as it is. Uh, let's see. Let's see, what do I want to go into here? I could go into Ninetales, and that's probably looking like my best play at this point. Um, I could go into Sneasel too and fire off a knockoff, but he could switch in that Fletchinder on that. I, it, you know, I don't know what that set is. If it has a lot of HP investment and no item, then uh, he might take that relatively well, and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna just go for the Nasty Plot here. I'm expecting him to want to switch. Uh, predicting a flamethrower probably into Miltank because Miltank could take one of those with its thick fat ability at plus two though I don't think he's gonna be able to take that just because he is physically defensive as we found out earlier Judging by how much damage the knockoff from Sneasel did So he is going to make the switch into Miltank. He no longer has his lefties as well So that is helping me out. Will a flamethrower do 29% at plus two? with thick fat included um I'm going to say it will. I can also be cheeky and go for like Psy Shock or something, but that's going to hit him on the physically defensive side and it's not stab and I don't have a boosting item. So it's probably in my best interest to just click Flamethrower here. It'll do a lot of damage even if Fletchender wants to come in, which I don't think it will want to just switch in and take that damage uh, just because he can't Oko me with an Acrobatics without a Swords Dance boost. So I feel relatively safe here. It's looking like he's going to have to sacrifice something and it is going to be the mill tank. So his defensive core is gone and we have that forgot or weakened a little bit. So things are looking good. He's going to go into Armaldo now. Uh, I don't know if you can take a plus two flamethrower. You probably can just barely. If it was fire blast that I had here, you might be dead. But uh, I'm okay with letting Ninetales go down to get a butt ton of damage off on this because these are one this is one of those Pokemon that you're just not gonna kill in one hit most of the time he actually misses the rock blast which is really really unfortunate um, he might burn my Paso Berry right here with an Aqua Jet which I would be okay with I mean it kind of stinks because it would have been nice for the forgot but uh, yeah that's just really really unfortunate I'm gonna write that in the uh, chat here give show him a little uh, 
you know, good sportsmanship because that that just stinks. Because now I don't know what he's gonna do. He's gonna have to take damage on something else. Forgot here, which is die if it comes in. A uh, haunter does not outspeed me unless it's choice scarfed. And even still, if he is choice scarfed, he's not okoing me with anything. So he's gonna have to take damage on something else at the very least, and that really stinks. That really, really stinks. Uh, especially because what is the the accuracy on Rock Blast? It's like 90%. That's just silliness. So he's gonna go into the Fletch into here. This will take the Psy Shock, and uh, he's gonna set up a Sword Stance, actually. Now he might be able to kill me. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. I don't know. Acrobatics is pretty powerful. Yeah, that's just an Oko. That's not even a critical hit. The power of Fletch Cinder, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Now, unfortunately, because he missed that Rock Blast, he did have to take, you know, 62%. So now he's gonna be pressured to go for a Roost. Uh, I'm pretty sure an Ice Shard will be able to take out this Fletch Jinder from there. Uh, it might be a roll depending on how much HP investment he has. Uh, do I want to risk that or do I want to just go in with Quagsire and, you know, Earthquake predicting a Roost or something? I'm going to go into Quagsire. Um, I could Scald too. In case I feel like he's going to try to attack me or switch. Yeah, I'm going to Scald. We will Scald, it's fine. It is fine. He may want to switch here into Forgotier. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see. Uh, if I can get a burn on that, that'd be nice. He is going to go into Forgotier. Or Frogadier. Frogadier, as some people pronounce it. I don't know the correct way. I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> um, so we do get the burn, which again is a bit unfortunate for my opponent, but at least he's not a physical attacker, so it's not the end of the world. It just means that the, you know, residual damage and passive damage and all that stuff is going to rack up a little bit faster than he would like. Um, I could just go for EQ to finish him off right here. I could be silly and, you know, protect, recover, and that would leave my Quagsire relatively healthy, as he is going to show off the Hydro Pump there. I did want to see just what he had to hit me with, because sometimes these things can carry Grass Knot, uh, and I did not want to get O-Code. So I'm tempted to go right into Vile Plume, but I'm expecting him to not have the Grass Knot here. If he predicted the Protect and went for the Hydro Pump because of that, um, he is a better player than me. Or, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, was just, that would just be a fantastic play if he did do that. But uh, he's just going to hit me with the Hydro Pump here. I'm going to finish him off with an Earthquake. I decided against the whole Recover shenanigans. I guess I could have, but that's just, I don't know. I didn't feel like it, basically. So now he's going to go into his Haunter, I'm assuming. And kill me with something. Does Haunter get Energy Ball? I feel like it does. Uh, is that what you're going to go for? I mean, you can probably just kill me with a Shadow Ball, but I'm going to protect here to see what you have. No, it's just Shadow Ball. Okay, you're probably, probably Scarfed, honestly. Looking at your team, you're probably Scarfed. You don't have a lot of really fast things. Forgot here, or Frogadier, or whatever you want to call it, is base 97, but that's not the fastest thing in the world. Um, so he's just going to go for Shadow Ball again. I'm going to save Quagsire for the uh, Flesh Ender because uh, Vile Plume is fodder at this point. I don't need it for anything. I could Moonlight, but he's definitely going to get these Bedef Drop if I do that. So I can just go for Giga Drain and try to avoid a potential to it KO here if he manages to not get the Spadef drop. I mean, it's still going to do a lot of damage, even though it's a resistant hit, uh, just because I am, you know, modest, and this is a Haunter. So yeah, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to avoid the KO from the Shadow Ball here, unless he gets a Min Roll, which would stink. But just in case this thing happened to be like Focus Sash or something, we got the damage off, and that's really all that matters. So now I can go into Sneasel to most likely clean up the game here. I guess what it's going to come down to is uh, if this thing is Scarfed, he's going to Shadow Ball me because he's locked into that and it's not going to do that much. Uh, I really don't have much to lose by clicking Pursuit here. He opts to just stay in and go for the Shadow Ball and I'm just going to kill him. And it turns out that he was indeed Scarfed. So that's cool. Now it's going to come down to whether or not this Fletch Ender can take an Ice Shard. Um, he might go for Roost, possibly, but I don't think that'll change my play, because if he loses his Flying Typing, then Ice Punch will do less, because, yeah, oh, he's actually gonna live with 1%! 
1%! That was a damage roll and we lost it, unfortunately. I hope that doesn't lose me the game. I don't think it will, because he's Swords Dance. Um, so he's got Acrobatic, Swords Dance, Roost. Did he show the other move? Hopefully he doesn't have Overheat, because Acrobatics is not killing Magneton, and you're just going to get O-Code. So uh, we should be okay here, as he is going to Roost. I went for the Ice Punch, because it probably is going to do a decent chunk. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, knockoff is not going to be getting the boost because this thing does not have an item um, So he actually goes for the swords dance there, but I outspeed you uh, So my ice shard will out prioritize your acrobatics and that is going to be the game So Sneasel uh, pulls out the victory for us and that's gonna be it for this time because it's been about 25 26 minutes We only got two battles in in 25 minutes. That is crazy. They were long ones um, not necessarily really long as far as turns were concerned, but they just kind of uh, drug on a little bit. But I'm fine with that. I'm enjoying the team. And I'm enjoying uh, hanging out, playing some NU with you guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like, rating, or a comment, or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.